Hi, everyone, and welcome to um, our unit on cultural theories of the media. In the next few minutes, I'm going to provide you with a guide for how to approach this week's readings. As an overview week, this week covers a lot of territory. It takes you from the 1940s and 50s all the way to today and covers lots of twists and turns of what's happened in mass communication theory throughout those almost 80 years. While it might seem overwhelming, stick with it as we'll be coming back to the concepts introduced here in subsequent weeks. And I'll say more about that in this lecture about what, which weeks we'll be covering what, but, or what things will be covered later. The, sh the chapter should take two to three hours if you read it quite carefully. I'm going to suggest that you skip or skim pages 150 to 159 where Barron and Davis discuss the cultural turn uh, in the United States. That section will take you in a really pretty different direction and away from the theories we'll be covering in this course. So in a course like ours, um, these broad survey courses, things always have to be left out. And we've decided to focus on what are referred to as the grand social theories that are most influential in mass communication, mass communication research today, particularly in the field of communication. Um, this chapter is a bit of a hodgepodge. Um, parts of it fit together well and inform subsequent parts. Other sections seem tangential and it's kind of hard to grasp exactly how it all fits together. So try to think of it this way. We're moving on from mass society theory to the next phase of grand social theory to attempt to explain the media and our relationship with it. We'll examine the cultural trend in mass communication theory over the next four weeks. So this week is really your sneak peek into what's to come over the next few weeks. As we've already seen, there are three main areas of mass communication theory. We've spent a little bit of time with mass society and propaganda theories, that post-positive bucket on the left. And for the next several weeks, we'll focus on critical cultural theories. As Barron and Davis describe on page 131, these theories address, quote, questions about the way media might produce profound changes in social life through their subtle influence on the myriad of social practices that form the foundation of everyday life. Based on the way you've been talking about the media so far, this is really how you think of the media as well. You're interested in how the media might change social life and on their subtle influence on daily practices and everyday life. Oops, I forgot to include my arrow. This is what we'll be focusing on in this class. But in order to make this transition, I need to acknowledge an important area of mass communication research that we aren't really covering this quarter, media effects. For those that are interested, there will be an opportunity for more media effects uh, content or theory later in the quarter when you choose your own mass communication theory adventure. I think that's in week seven of this quarter. So just a quick 101 on media effects, Barron and Davis touched on this in chapter one, um, and the chapter you'll be reading this week also does some pretty good summarizing of what media effects research was all about. But media effects was sort of this interim period between mass society theory, which we covered last week, and the cultural theories, which we'll start working on this week. So media effects research of the 1940s, 50s, and 60s basically held that the media have different influence over individuals' behavior. Um, building on mass society theory, they sought to, uh, building on mass society theory assumptions about the importance of controlling the media so as to control society for the sake of some sort of social good, obviously determined by elites, according to mass society theory. Media effects research attempted to empirically confirm through scientific research what sorts of effects the media have. Ultimately, they determined that media have limited effects, but still this body of research has persisted, mostly in the field of psychology and to a lesser degree in sociology. From a communication perspective, we've moved more solidly in the direction of critical and cultural theories. 
because, as Baron and Davis put it, media effects didn't sufficiently account for the complexity of human interactions with the media. The turn toward culture, shared meanings, shared understandings, and shared social norms represents a seismic shift from the scientific method-based stimulus response models of media effects. These scholars were and are interested in how mediated mass culture um, might be influencing the ways we experience the world. They looked at audiences and how individuals make meaning from the media they consume. They looked at cultural texts, film, music, television, and later the internet as important sources of meaning and identification with the social world. They were concerned with groups of people who share a culture, as in cultural studies scholars, as well as institutions, and to quote Baron and Davis, how the culture industries turned into a commodity, turn culture into a commodity and sell it for profit. That's the tradition of political economy. But all of this really starts with the Frankfurt School. The whole cultural turn starts with the Frankfurt School. We'll spend more time on the Frankfurt School in the later in the quarter, so I won't go into any depth here, but the cultural studies and political economy theories that were that currently dominate the study of, of the media for communication scholars today wouldn't be here without the Frankfurt School. That's why it's covered in some, some detail this week and will be covered as a standalone unit later this quarter. So Marx, Marxism, and neo-Marxism obviously have strong connotations in our cultural landscape. So I'm just gonna ask you to try not to get too caught up in what those words mean in terms of the political spectrum. Instead, try to focus on what these scholars had to say about the relationship between the media and our society. And with that, I'll leave you to it. Enjoy the week.